Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship experience of the Aguam Congregational Church in Aguam, Massachusetts on this fourth Sunday in Easter. I am Deacon Caroline Bassett. Preaching today is Reverend Tom Howells, our interim minister and pastor. Janet Brown is our Director of Family Ministries and Member in Discernment in the Hamden Association of the United Church of Christ. Ann Tapley is our organist. Because of the restrictions on gathering in groups, we are still not able to be together as a congregation. Though this can be frustrating, it does not overcome us as we are together as one in the body of Christ as a faith community. This is the first Sunday of the month and we would normally have communion on this day. Since we cannot gather to do that, we are trying a virtual communion service. We have distributed sealed communion packets with a wafer and juice to many of you in the immediate area of the church. We ask you to have them ready for when we get to that part of the service that we might participate together virtually. Let us share now a moment of worship and prepare our hearts together as we sing the hymn, My Hope is Built. Out. When he has brought out all his own, 
He goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This ends the reading of our gospel. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join me in our prayers of the people. Each time that I pause, you may respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We join together our hearts as we pray for the sick and the infected. God, heal and help them. Sustain their bodies and their spirits. Contain the spread of infection. We pray, too, for the workers on the front lines. Protect and strengthen them as they serve those around them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our vulnerable populations. God, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. We pray for the young and the strong. God, give them the necessary caution to keep them safe and inspire them to help. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all of the people facing change right now, for those facing layoffs and financial hardship. God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. For families with young children at home for the foreseeable future, grant them patience and wisdom. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Christians in every neighborhood, community, and city. May your Holy Spirit inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve, and to proclaim the gospel, that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. O oh God, in this time of worship, help us to realize our unity with all who put their trust in you. All our lives you have been leading us, even when we did not know it. The simple things we take for granted, food, shelter, home and friends, work and play, the beauty of the world we see, the interest of the thoughts we think, all are yours, your gifts to us for our welfare and happiness. But they cannot do for us all that you desire unless we realize that they come from you. Open our eyes, we beseech you, that we may see you as you are. You who have formed us for yourself, reveal yourself to us this day. Lord, you know who are yours. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Deliver us from the fear that separates us from you. The fear of the known, the greater fear of the unknown. Strengthen us with power in the inner person that renewing our life from your divine life, we may be free indeed. In this world so full of unanswered questions and unforeseen dangers, may we find in you a safe refuge and a sure defense. You who have set eternity in our hearts, grant us this day and always your peace. Watch over us all, so that day in and day out, we may delight in your presence and ever do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to our scripture reading from the New Testament today, I want to prepare our minds for what we are about to hear. The book of Acts 
was written by the author of the third gospel, Luke. It was written as a continuation of the accurate account given in the gospel of the history of Christian beginnings. In Acts 2, 42 and following, we have an account of the establishment of the first Christian church. Convinced by the power of Peter's preaching on the day of Pentecost, which we will be celebrating in a few weeks at the end of May, 3,000 believed the good news about Jesus and were baptized. This forming the first Christian church in Jerusalem. Our text today gives us a picture of that primitive church and what they did together. Hear now the account of that in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. We read these early believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Send the reading of our lesson this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your patience with us. We are sometimes slow to learn, but we thank you for your communication to us, to help us in our faith journey. I pray that the words which I speak and that the thoughts which we all have would be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and blessed Redeemer. Amen. Several years ago, well, many years ago now, as I got farther from the event, uh, time loses clarity, but what I remember is significant. When I was pastor of another church, I was outside on the front lawn on a beautiful summer day working on the signboard. Now, this was not my usual activity. Uh, it was a one and done type thing, so don't get any ideas about me changing our signboard out front. But while I was changing the sign, a young boy of about 10 or 12 rode up on his bike. He stopped and slid off the seat and straddled the bike and leaned forward on the handlebars. I greeted him with a, hi, beautiful day. He acknowledged me and then looking from me to the church building and then back to me, he asked, what do you do in there? He was obviously not familiar with church. And so I, I could have given him a, a good theological answer by we worship God. But I'm not sure he would have understood that. So I told him that we sing and we pray and we have fun. I went on to say, maybe you would like to join us some Sunday. Have your parents bring you and see for yourself. As he put his foot back on the pedal of his bike and pushed off, he said, nah, and that was it. As I thought about our text this morning, I wondered, what do we do in there? I later shortened that to, what do we do as a church? In there or in here, in the building, at the conclusion of our worship service when we have opportunity to meet together, though right now we do not. But sometimes at the end of the service I will invite you and the congregation 
to join me for fellowship. Now when we hear that invitation, we usually think of getting together for coffee and tea, juice and some goodies and have informal discussions around the tables. I know we all miss that due to our current situation. I really do. However, a cup of coffee and general discussion doesn't seem to me to be a major purpose for the church, enjoyable as it is. When I invite you to fellowship, I am offering a different experience. Now the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia. It means sharing in common. It is sometimes translated as communion. Now we will be sharing the sacrament of Holy Communion in a while, though in a unique way. This shared life experience is what the church is to be and do. Not just the sharing of worship once a week or communion once a month, but the sharing of our personal lives with other believers. And so just what is it that we are to share as a basis of our Christian experience in the church? What do we do? I'm not referring just to doing church on Sunday. I'm talking about living as the body of Christ. Now the basis of our faith is found in scriptures and in our scripture reading in Acts today we find that the early church who did not have church buildings gathered together for particular reasons. Now, I believe that we ought to follow their experience in general principle not necessarily in detail because we are separated from them by time, culture, social and political differences, as well as language. But what are the principles involved in fellowship, koinonia, communion? If we are going to be followers of Jesus Christ as he intended us to be, we should look at the early church the early followers of Jesus, and learn from their example. We need to be, as the first disciples were, devoted to being Christian. In their day, they were a minor community without any influence, without the support of secular society or the government, so what is it that we are to be devoted to in order to experience true fellowship? The first thing I notice is that they were devoted. That this is not a casual kind of thing. Before we get to what they did, notice at the beginning we have the initiative. It came from within. Scripture says they devoted themselves. That's the only way it's going to get to happen. No one can do it for us. Each of us must be devoted. And at the end of that paragraph, we read that they did this with sincere hearts. One cannot just go through the motions and expect results. It takes devotion and sincerity. Now, what did they do? The King James Version uh, reads that they continued steadfast. The question is, in what? They continued steadfast in first the apostles' teaching. What we believe is vitally important to our faith journey as individuals and as a faith community. The apostles' teaching for them was oral tradition. Fortunately for us, it has been inscripturated, written down, so that we have the basic tenets of our faith from those who learned it from Jesus himself. 
Study of scripture, therefore, ought to be a priority in our lives so that we have the basis of true fellowship. Second thing is, they devoted themselves to fellowship, being and sharing together, not just on Sunday. Many of you have experienced this sharing together and have been blessed by it. We read also that they broke bread together. It probably refers to the sacrament we call Holy Communion. They remembered Jesus. He is what it's all about. That's what our communion service does. The bread and fruit of the vine, the body and blood of Christ given for us. Lastly, we find that they devoted themselves to prayer. We cannot exist as Christians or as a Christian community without communicating with God. Prayer is vitally important. Personal, private, individual prayer, and corporate prayer. Now, these were all done in community. We read that they really shared life together. They cared about each other. They lived out their faith. You know, Christianity at its core is a lifestyle, not a worship style. We need sincere devotees to Christ and his church. if We are going to continue as a church to follow Jesus. Amen. to the communion service today, it is a little different since we cannot gather together as a congregation. We would like to share this sacred moment with you, though separated by time and space. Many of you have received prepackaged communion kit of wafer and juice that we have consecrated for their sacred use. I would encourage you to have them ready to partake of at the proper time. We will eat the bread and drink the cup together. Though it may not be at the same time, since you are watching this at your discretion, let us prepare our hearts now as we offer a prayer of confession. Please join me as we confess our sins together. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we confess, confess with, with shame, shame those times when we have failed to be your faithful people, when we have made an empty show of our religion, when we have judged others and been blind to our own sins, we have left compassionate words unsaid, held back unforgiving words, and loosened our lips with trivial and hurting words. Forgive us, we pray, and by the power of your Spirit, Make us strong for all that is to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The Lord our God is a forgiving God, taking away the sins of all who are repentant. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have consecrated for us a new and living way. And in your tender mercy gave your only son, Jesus, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. Grant unto us so to partake of this bread and this cup 
that our hearts and lives may be truly yielded to the sway of Christ's Spirit. Now, as in accordance with his holy institution, we commemorate his last supper with his disciples and his offering of himself upon the cross. We humbly ask you to grant your Holy Spirit to sanctify these creatures of bread and fruit of the vine, which we now consecrate to their sacred use, that they may become unto us symbols of the body that was broken, of the blood that was shed for us. May they beget in us penitent hearts and a quickened faith. May we receive this holy sacrament to our comfort. Through our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. On the night of his betrayal we read that Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it. And he said this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink now in remembrance of Jesus. Let us now offer together a prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, O God, for Christ's presence and for the spiritual food of Christ's body and blood. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful to your will. Go with us, that whether we are gathered together or scattered, we may be the servant church of the servant Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us offer now a common commission. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together we may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now live in peace and let your faith make a difference. Encourage one another and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us sing together now our closing hymn, Go Now in Peace. <laughs>